I am Dr. Philip McMillan. Welcome uh, to my presentation today. This is the 2nd of January 2023 and as usual I'm bringing you cutting-edge science to try and explain some of the difficult questions that we see floating around. So the question is why are there so many Omicron variants? And I had been thinking about this for a while, but it was brought closer to my attention when I saw that in the Australian, they asked an important question. Are vaccines fueling new variants of COVID-19? That's a big question, but again, one of those controversial questions. But the truth is, is when you're looking at science, there is no controversy. You always focus on what is in front of you. So before I start breaking this down into a little bit more detail, I would like to encourage everyone that please join me on Substack. That's where I have everything COVID-19. In case this full video is not able to be on uh, the MSM platforms, you will always find it here on Substack. And so I'm gonna take you through, if you're live, the full presentation as to exactly what I think may be happening. Some of this is based around the research and I'll show you the papers and uh, other bits that I'll explain are based on my own thoughts about the research. So let's start with this question about these variants. Why would this be coming up at this point? I would hope that maybe we are looking at the data and this is the data as usual. I always highlight John Hopkins which shows you those red dots on the screen are the areas where you have the highest levels of Omicron um, being spread across the world. That's in Europe, North America, and as usual, Africa seems to have evaded this. So our question should then be, because Africa at the, currently is probably still less than 10% vaccinated, well, why is Africa not spreading all of these variants? Why is it in highly vaccinated regions? So this is what I'm going to try and answer. And I'm going to be looking at the science and giving you some insights into some of the important points about the differences between Omicron and the other variants. Now, I'll bring up this slide here just to show you. I got this one from Forbes. And this here shows you a slide with regards to all of the different variants. And you can see at the bottom here, this would have been the Wuhan strain, and then it would have evolved into the beta, uh, the gamma, and then the delta, which is um, primarily the green ones here. And this was what was happening in the early part of the pandemic. And then last year, we had Omicron. And this is the Omicron lineage. And you can see it's a significant deviation from the other variants. That in itself is a question mark, but that's not necessarily what I'm focused on at the moment. My question is quite simple. I understand that we're getting Omicron variants, but why are we not getting variants from the others? And as I said to you, though, these other um, variants here have been around before, they were here first. So even though we're having Omicron, why is there not any other variants of say Delta or Lambda? why is it just Omicron? That in itself is the, is the question that had been puzzling me and this is what I really wanted to try and come to. So here is a bit about the science. The first thing that you have to understand is that the virus enters the cells in two different ways and this image here is hoping to try and clarify this point. You have two sides here and I'm going to break them down on the left and the right but this is the endosomal entry and this here is the furin cleavage site, TMPRSS entry point. So when you look at the original viruses, I've darkened this side because I'm highlighting that the main viruses, Wuhan, Alpha, Delta, Lambda, all entered through TMPRSS. What that means is that the virus would bind to the spike protein the spike protein would then be cleaved by this enzyme that's on the surface of the cell, and it allows it to literally drop the RNA inside the cell. It's a very quick and efficient way for the virus to get into the cell. And I equate it to almost picking a lock of the front door. If you imagine the virus as a burglar, it comes in, picks the lock and walks straight into the house. That's how the virus primarily entered for the original viruses, alpha, 
um, Wuhan Delta. With regards to Omicron, however, when Omicron came in December 2021, one of the, the most unusual things that I noticed was the entry route had changed. So Omicron primarily uses the endosomal route of entry. What that means is that it binds to the ACE, goes inside, it then gets taken into an endosome where it's then acidified and then the RNA is released into the cell. It's a much slower process. And I equate it to a burglar effectively climbing over the wall, over the hedge, to go through a window in the attic of your house. He doesn't seem to be able to pick the lock. And this is the comparison between the two ways of entering the, the cell. And I, get, I show you again the original. This is the route that Omicron takes. It's a slow route, but it seems to be far more effective for Omicron. Why was it not there for the main route initially? And so when we look at this route, which seems to be the most logical route for the virus, is it that it is blocked or is that this is more efficient? If this was a more efficient way, I suspect the virus would be primarily using this initially. So this is most likely the most efficient way. This is, however, blocked and therefore the virus uses this route. The question then becomes, why would that route, the original route, become blocked? That's where I'll go into the science with regards to what is the mechanism and why would it be occurring since December 2021. Again, I'll just take a quick reminder about the virus. This here is an image of the virus with all the spike proteins on the surface. This is what it's a cut section looks like. So you see these little points here are the spike proteins and every one of them represents a key that when it clicks onto the lock of your cell, it will open it. And that's what the spike protein does. And this is what we have targeted with regards to vaccination. And this is how we've reached a point now where it is a quite a reasonable question to ask is it feasible that vaccination in and of itself, as we look at the map of the world, is driving the Omicron variant? Now, this is exactly what Gert van den Bosch had spoken about. And at the time he was taken off uh, mainstream media, he's still speaking in much more quietly because I think he said what he has to say. And I'd encourage anyone who hasn't listened to his most recent presentation with Dr. Chetty, where it's five past midnight, it's well worth a listen. He is extremely concerned about the future. And so we have a challenge on our hands as to why is this occurring and what can we do about it? So at this point, I'll be breaking down the science a little bit more and trying to explain to you what is going on. If you are live, you'll be watching this, but there is a good chance that at this point, you will only be able to see this part of the presentation on Substack. So please stay with me and let's go through the science. 